He first takes over Proverbs 16 and 7 said that, that God gave him peace all around on every side. God blessed him and made even his enemies to be at peace with him. I've got another scripture that says that when Solomon came, he made, he made him have peace on every side. So how did he go from peace to such trouble and fear in the night that he had to have 60 bodyguards? What did he do that opened himself up to tormenting spirits? You see, the Bible said that there were three men that God raised up because of what Solomon did when he married Pharaoh's daughters. When he began to worship idols, when he began to be influenced by the wrong voices in his life. You see, who you begin to associate with, who you begin to come in close alliance with, when you, your best friends are not Christians, when you open up your life and your home and your family to just anybody, don't be surprised if trouble comes to your home. We have to guard carefully our relationships. We have to guard carefully our families and our children. We ought to know people that are involved with our kids. The Bible said in 1 Kings 11 that strange women turned the heart of Solomon away from God and caused him to worship idols. And when that happened, the Lord was angry with Solomon, Solomon 1 Kings eleven fourteen, 14, and raised up adversaries against him. Now I want you to hear me this morning. There were three adversaries, Hadad, Razar, and Jeroboam. And Jeroboam, these three men formed an allegiance. It's interesting that David fought these same enemies, but when he died, God gave Solomon peace. But when he began to turn to idols, it gave the right to tormenting spirits, and one of those enemies came back at Solomon, and he had to fight it all over again, the battles that his father fought. What I want you to understand this morning is that we have to watch the alliances we make with people. The Bible said don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Be careful what kind of business associates you get involved with and the kinds of people that you enter into because these things can steal your peace and take... If they don't love your God, you better watch how closely involved you get with people. The scripture lets us know that later in his life, he became vexed. He became tormented. There were familiar spirits that were familiar with his father David that then had inroads into his life and it was because of the actions that he took the same spirit came after him vexing him tormenting him giving him all these oppressive thoughts that stole his sleep at night Proverbs 17 said an evil man when he goes through rebellion will be sent a cruel messenger. That cruel messenger is the devil. I'm, I'm wanting you to understand that there are things that we can do. In this case, he married women that did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you begin to date, when you begin to marry, when you begin to get in serious relationship with people who do not have faith in God, you are opening up yourself to the torment of the enemy. The Bible tells us that later Saul comes on the scene. You remember King Saul and how that the Bible said tormenting spirits came in his life. What happened? At one time he prophesied. At one time he was filled with spirit. But something happened. You know what he did? He opened himself to tormenting spirits. How did he do it? The Bible lets us know that he became rebellious. He sought the witch of Endor. He began to look to other sources than God. And the scripture said that David would come play his heart and the evil spirits would depart. But there came a time when, when he no longer could fight and the spirits took over his life. And Saul took his own life through vexation of the mind and depression and torment. A, a man who at one time had a covenant and a walk with God, but he ended up falling on his own sword. 
We must realize that we're in a battle and our minds are constantly being under attack and that's why we have to put on the helmet of salvation. That's why we have to get into the Word of God. That's why we have to deal with our fears. You know, fear has torment and if you allow it, it'll, it'll cause you to lose all peace in your life. I've talked with people People who've been tormented. People who live lives of torment of fear. There's one thing to have a natural fear. I fear snakes. I'll, I'll, I'll always, that's a good fear. But I'm not talking about a good fear. I'm talking about abnormal fears. Abnormal fears that dominate and torment people's minds. And I just felt like today that the Lord told me to come into this place and proclaim to those who have been tormented with unnatural fears, God's will for you is not to be bound with that spirit of fear and torment, but God has peace and joy and all the help that you need to set you free from every fear. Give God a praise if you believe that. I want, to, I want to tell you what I believe, and let me quickly move to what I want to say. I was asking the Lord, I said, God, how do people, how do Christians, I'm not talking about people who are lost, I know how they open their lives to demons, but how do Christians open the door to tormenting spirits? And the biggest thing I heard the Lord say in my spirit was He said, through resentment, bitterness, and unforgiveness. I want to give you a scripture and I, I want you to listen to it carefully. Matthew 18. There's a story that Jesus told. And it's, it's very important to hear the wording of Christ. He said, and I'm going to tell it in everyday language, let's suppose a person was going to court to an IRS judge because he owed the United States government $54. That is the equivalent of the story Jesus told in Matthew 18. Imagine in your mind an IRS judge and in comes this person who has been breaking the law. He owes the government $54 and the judge looks at him and the man says, please, your honor, please, I'll pay the debt. Just give me a break. I don't have the, I don't have the money, but I'll go get the money and all I'm asking you for is mercy. And the judge says, you know what? I'm going to give you mercy. You just pay the bill and we'll wipe it clean. You're released. And Jesus tells this story, he says, this man who had a $54 debt in our equivalent today walks outside and he sees a man and in the, and in the wording and in the same uh, dollar amount today, a man who owed him $20 million. He walks over to the man who owes him $20 million he slaps him, he attacks him, he calls for the authorities, has him uh, locked up, chained up, thrown into prison, says, I'm going to take everything you've got. And he didn't know it, but the IRS judge had gone out for lunch and was sitting there watching this whole thing happen. Watching the man he had just pardoned a $54 debt for I got it backwards. A $20 million debt for. All right, let's start over. The IRS man had a $20 million tax bill forgiven. The guy goes out and sees a guy who owes him 54 bucks. You know what the Bible said the judge did? Jesus is telling this story. He said the judge said... In Matthew 18, he said, You are a wicked person because I forgave your $20 million debt and you refused to forgive a, a $54 debt. There